Hello everybody. This is What the Bible Says. You're watching live stream services. I am Armi Gisalva. I am the pastor emeritus of Bible of the Church. In a few minutes, you are going to listen to the Word of God from our senior pastor, Pastor Kent Gisalva. A blessed morning to each and every one of us and welcome once again to the services of the Bible Baptist Church, 55 Karipunan Street, Cebu City. We are online and continuing the work of the Lord and we praise the Lord that God has given us many results uh, from the time that we were locked down and praise God that uh, uh, it's improving by the day here in Cebu City and we are uh, able to go about our uh, uh, business and our uh, appointments but although there are still some limitations, but nevertheless, there is more freedom that God has allowed us through our local government leaders. And we continue to pray for them, especially our healthcare workers, our doctors, our nurses, and everyone that is involved in our healthcare system here in our country, and also our frontliners, uh, such as the police department and everyone that is involved in the first responders. Continue to pray also that God will bless our church leaders, most especially our pastors, who are scattered in different places in the archipelago and also in different places around the world. We do have missionaries that are continuing also in spite of everything that is going on. And though we have different um, uh, stages and different uh, situations, but nevertheless, we have one God that we trust, and that is our Lord Jesus Christ. And we do pray and ask that we pray for one another and continue to encourage one another at this particular time. Most especially, let us encourage one another in our service and in our unity in our local churches. Let us not look for excuses by which uh, we can be able to um, uh, uh, forgo uh, the activities and or uh, online uh, fellowships and or anything that needs to be done in order that we can be able to continue the work of the Lord. Let us also be faithful in our giving and let us continue to participate in the things that is upcoming, uh, the events, most especially our upcoming World Missions Conference which will be held online. But nevertheless, there are things that we need to prepare for, most especially also our faith promise commitments that we are going to take uh, at the end of our conference. And we do pray and ask that we pray for every speaker, that uh, we pray for Dr. Mark Chapel, uh, our Pastor Emeritus, Dr. Armi Gisalva, Dr. Gerardo Nable, Dr. Paul Byers, uh, Dr. Uh, Renato Ribaton, Dr. Gilbert Tuquero, and Pastor Andales and Pastor Subrabas, who are also part of our team, and most of them are part of our Asian Baptist Clearinghouse uh, a team that uh, uh, is involved uh, heavily in world evangelism. Let us continue to pray that God will protect us in the country of the Philippines, because I believe God is going to use us and is still using us here in the Philippines to be a beacon of light throughout all the world. And so we urge all our missionaries to register and uh, make sure that uh, even right now, you can be able to check out our online registration. And uh, don't forget that during uh, the conference, the registration will only be up to Tuesday. And uh, after that, uh, there will be no more uh, acceptance of registration. And so even right now, you can register for the conference and make sure to tell everyone uh, that uh, you know that uh, wants to be involved in our World Missions Conference to do so. And it's very simple. Just register on our website and our Facebook page will tell you and give you instructions how to do so. And so our team has done a very great job. And so I praise the Lord for them that have been working tirelessly to be able to do this. But let's continue to pray for our conference and uh, may God continue to steer us for world evangelism. This morning, open your Bibles to the book of Romans chapter number 12. Romans chapter number 12, and we will be reading verses 4 and 5. Romans chapter 12, verses 4 and 5. And here the Bible says, For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we, being many, are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, in Jesus' mighty name, we're so thankful and we're so grateful that we can be able to once again meet on air and online. And though uh, uh, this uh, season 
we are uh, locked down in our homes and some are able to go and congregate in our assemblies right now in our uh, church uh, building in Karipunan at the same time in different locations in uh, Mandawe and uh, in the province and even in the rest of the Philippines. I do pray that the Holy Spirit be the one to have uh, uh, his, uh, I pray that the Holy Spirit will have uh, His place in the hearts of each and every one of us. May we be open and humble to hear your word, be inspired, be revived, and Lord, even be rebuked, and Lord, be uh, uh, reprimanded so that we can be able to wake up to what is reality and uh, never be sucked into what the devil is trying to uh, lure us in and to be cold and to be uh, indifferent about uh, the things of God, most especially the souls of men. I pray that you will get the glory this morning if there is anyone that is not saved, not born again. I pray that you will speak to them. May they have the relationship with Jesus Christ by accepting Him this morning as their only Savior of their life. I pray this in Christ's precious name. Amen and amen. This common verse or verses that we have read this morning uh, just uh, reminds us how important it is to look at the church as the body of Christ. Now, when we talk about the body, as we said many uh, services ago, that uh, it speaks about unity. And the body needs to function uh, at every level, whether uh, in the systems, in the most minute details, at every level needs to be function, uh, their function needs to be proper. And so it is important to note that everyone has been put by God in a specific place to be able to function in the body so that the whole body will be healthy. And it is important that we recognize the uh, health of the body is dependent upon the performance of every individual member of that body. The church is described as a body and both in its life and in its function. And our bodies are designed to live, to act, to work. It is natural for the body to function in such a way that what we do in our life today will promote our life also tomorrow. If we eat right and exercise right today, we will have a better life tomorrow. The same is true for the church. What they have done in the past is what we are enjoying today and what we do today will be enjoyed by our children in the future. And so it is important to have a continuum in our service to the Lord and making the body of Christ, the church, Bible Baptist Church, strong and healthy. Now the body, uh, physical body has enemies like disease and uh, uh, we have our own uh, immune system that sometimes fights against us. It is what we call self-destruction and uh, uh, diseases like autoimmune uh, diseases uh, are our immune system that, that attacks our own uh, uh, cells and, and destroys our own bodies. Like uh, the human immunodeficiency virus or HIV AIDS virus is a one that attacks our immune system, the white blood cells. Likewise, the church has enemies that keeps it, the body of Christ, from moving into the future and making it not healthy. Enemies can damage or cripple the body, and enemies can kill even the body. Therefore, we must be ready to fight these enemies. We must be ready to discard these enemies and do not let it wreak havoc in our body at the same way wreak havoc in the body of Christ. As we move forward today, now, more than ever, we need to be healthy spiritually as a church. It is a challenge, though, in these uh, trying times. But I believe God already knows about this. God already knows what He is doing in the world, and this is part of what is being written in prophecy. And it is important that we, as children of God, continue our focus on our Lord Jesus Christ. The race is not yet finished. And we must run our race faithfully. We must be faithful in the local church, faithful in making the body of Christ healthy. Therefore, this morning, I want us to take a look at four such enemies, very uh, basic but very powerful enemies uh, that, that, uh, that uh, keeps us from moving forward and makes the church unhealthy. As we move towards ever closer towards our World Missions Conference, let us be alert and let us make sure that we are all together and united in uh, world evangelism. This is the job of the local church. 
This is the command and the commission that God has given to us at Bible Baptist Church. At the sides of our auditorium, we find the words, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And we have been doing that by the grace of God and continue to do so. And let us not let uh, the baton down. Let's pass it on to the next generation. Let us be faithful now in our generation. The first enemy of the body of Christ and even the physical body that will wreak havoc in our health is ignorance. Ignorance may come in many forms. We have religious ignorance. Now, this message is not only for the saved, but can also be for those that do not have a relationship with Jesus Christ. You may be tuned in today, and we're thankful to the Lord that uh, many of uh, uh, our viewers come from different uh, continents in North America, in Africa, in Asia, and even in uh, Europe. We praise the Lord for that, even in our own island. But uh, ignorance is the one that will really uh, destroy the body of Christ. Ignorance is the one that will destroy even our physical health. There is religious ignorance. In Isaiah chapter 45, verse number 20, we find that in our society today, there is a lot of ignorance as far as God and godliness is concerned. The Bible says, Assemble yourselves and come, draw near together. Ye that are escaped of the nations, they have no knowledge that set up the wood of their graven image and pray unto a God that cannot save. Oh, there are many sincere people today, even here in our country, that pray sincerely. But folks, sincerity does not necessarily mean the truth. Sometimes we can be, and I say this out of love, and I say this out of truth from the Word of God, which we just read, Sincerity can sometimes be untruthful. Sincerity does not necessarily mean that you are right. We can be sincerely wrong. In Jeremiah chapter 5, verse number 21, Hear now this, O foolish people and without understanding, which have eyes and see not, which have ears and hear not. There is today in the world religious ignorance. You see, the most important thing that we need to look at from the Word of God is that when we approach God, it is not through religion, but it is through a relationship with Jesus Christ. The true God in the Bible, in John 4, 24, the Bible declares God is a spirit, and they that worship Him, worship God, must worship Him in spirit and in truth. The essence of God is spirit. And therefore, to worship God wholeheartedly and truthfully, we must worship Him the way He has designed us to worship, through our spirit. We can never worship emotionally. That's our soul. We cannot just worship just through our physical body. It has to be through our spirit because our spirit is the one that connects to God. But here's the problem, folks. Our spirit had been disconnected because of sin. The Bible declares in Romans chapter 5, verse number 12, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, so death passed upon all men, in that all have sin. Sin is the problem of man. It is not COVID-19. It is not uh, a lack of finances. It is not just physical health that is the problem. Sometimes diseases wreak our body and our life. But listen, that's the least of our problem. The most important problem that we need to deal with is sin. Sin separated us from God. But the Savior, Jesus Christ, will reconcile us back to God. And the moment you accept Jesus Christ into your life, the Bible says that your spirit will be made alive. Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 1, the Bible says, And you hath he made alive, made quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins. And so it is important that we be not ignorant in these things. There is religious ignorance. Many scour for the different religions, but listen, it is not religion, it is a relationship. And there is what we call also for the Christian stubborn ignorance. There is religious ignorance for the non-believer. There is stubborn ignorance for the believer. The believer refusing to listen to God. 
There are many today that have a form of godliness but deny the power thereof. There is no difference from when they were non-believers and believers. The only thing, if there is any difference, is that they do not pray to idols. They do not do vices probably, but their attitude is still the same. The way they treat God is still the same. They treat God ordinarily. They, they do not take God seriously. They approach Him the same way they approach God in their former religion. Just as a means, as a form, but no substance, no service, just to warm the chairs. We are now in this uh, uh, pandemic, worldwide pandemic, and our, our gatherings, our assemblies have been um, uh, just online. And many like this, but this is not assembly. The assembly mentioned in the Bible is physical assembly. There is a different chemistry when we assemble together. I, as a preacher, uh, preach differently when, when I see people and when we assemble with one another. As uh, I listen to feedback from the members, the members miss that assembly because there is a different chemistry. The Spirit of God is moving, yes, in our midst right now, but He is moving more so in the way that He has designed us to move. He has designed us to assemble and he moves in a different way but nevertheless it is important that we be not stubborn hosea chapter 4 verse number 1 the bible says hear the word of the lord ye children of israel for the lord hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land because there is no truth no mercy nor knowledge of god in the land by swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery they break out and blood toucheth blood. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. And where do we get knowledge? It's from the word of God. The Bible says, I will also reject thee, God says, that thou shalt be no priest to, to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, and I will also forget thy children. There is stubborn ignorance. Very stubborn, children of God, stubborn. They hear messages upon messages upon messages, but still their heart is not moved. I shall not be moved is their theme song. Listen, we can specifically see the ignorance of God's word by God's people because all we do is hear but not listen. We hear sounds, but it does not go to our heart. It is possible to be destroyed by our own lack of knowledge and what can this ignorance do this lack of knowledge through stubborn ignorance do in our life as a christian it will cause you to miss salvation if you are a non-christian and you have stubbornly rejected the word of god it will make you miss true salvation to the christian it will cause you to disobey god's will it will cause you to practice religion instead of biblical faith. It will cause you to build monuments to yourself instead of building the work of God, investing in things that will pass and never using the things to reach people for the Lord Jesus Christ. It will cause you to miss God's purpose for you in the world. Many are depressed. Many are despondent. Many are despair. Why? Because they focus only in themselves. They never go beyond themselves. They get depressed. They get uh, anxieties. They get uh, 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 fears and worries uh, hound their life. You know, we just think about ourselves. We get depressed. But we think about God and what God's purpose is for us. We are happy and fulfilled. Because that's what God designed us to be. To be serving God. But listen, ignorance will destroy the body of Christ. Ignorance to the Word of God and stubborn ignorance is going to destroy the body of Christ. Stubborn ignorance will destroy you, my friend, from um, uh, keeping you to come close to God, from keeping you from being saved and being born again today. Believe the Word of God. Believe the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible says, and thou shalt be saved. Allow Him to come into your life and to save your soul. The second enemy of a healthy church is unbelief. Unbelief. 
The reason why we have an annual World Missions Conference, the reason why we have commitments is for us to grow in faith, to grow in faith in giving, and to grow in faith in going. You see, our church needs to go, but we cannot go without, the Bible says in Romans chapter number 10, without someone being sent. And who sends out these people? Who sends out the missionaries? Who sends out our pastors into the different uh, areas around uh, the Philippines and the world? It's the local church. It's the authority of the local church. But many members of the body of Christ, members of the church, members of Bible Baptist Church, if we are not careful, listen, we can be unbelievers. Now, unbelief is both a problem for the saved and the unsaved. Now, we may call someone an unbeliever if they have not believed in Jesus Christ, but there are also believers in Christ who are not living in faith. You see, the Christian life is a wonderful life. I say this all the time. Nindut ang Christian life. If we live it by faith. Nindut yud. You are going to experience things that you have never experienced before. You are going to see things that you have never seen before. And you are going to be in places that you have never been before. And you are going to see uh, uh, things that you have never uh, imagined that you would be in before. You could never imagine the transformation that will take place in your life. Because the Bible declares in, in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And when people look at you, they'll see a difference in you. And you can even react to yourself. And I can't believe that I am here right now and what God has done in my life. It is only because you have been following Jesus Christ by faith. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. It is a problem for both the saved and the unsaved. In John chapter 8, verse number 24, the Bible says, I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins, for if ye believe not that I am He, ye shall die in your sins. If you are not saved this morning, once again, I call this upon every point. Accept the Lord Jesus Christ. Be saved today. Be born again. Enter into a relationship with Jesus Christ. This is the simple fact that people will die in their sins. And when God looks at us and we have not accepted the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, when God looks at us, we are still in our sin, even though He has paid for our sin because we have never received the payment of our sin. And that is the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. The Bible says, believing and accepting Jesus Christ will save you. Folks, listen. Friend, listen. It is a matter of life and death. You know, when, when we end this life, this is, it, it's just... A millisecond, bam, you die. And then when you go into eternity, there will be no more years. It's eternity. Either with God in heaven or without God, separated from Him in the lake of fire. Starting from hell and then on toward the lake of fire. And that's something that you would not want to be in. Many people declare, oh, I'm going to see you in heaven. How do you know? Do you have... God's word backing you up because the Bible says there is a hell. There will be people. Now, I do not like people to go to hell. And this is the reason why I preach like this. Because I want you to go to heaven. It's not me that will make you go to heaven. I'm telling you the Bible says it's Jesus that will make you go to heaven. So accept Jesus today. Not Jesus plus works. Accept Jesus only. Jesus alone. Him and Him alone. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father except through me. Works has nothing to do with our salvation. If we, we can uh, earn our way through our works, then Jesus would not have come. The Bible says, true salvation, true faith in Christ will result in works. Now you may say, oh, but pastor, I have seen people who claim to be Christians, but look at them. They're worse than me. Then they may not be Christians. I don't know. I can't see their heart. But they may not be Christians. The Bible says, By their fruits ye shall know them. You cannot have an apple tree bearing mango fruit. You cannot have righteousness and evil at the same time. There is no one perfect, but yet God changes us through perfection and sanctification. And eventually when we come face to face, 
with our Lord Jesus Christ, then glorification comes. Praise God for that. But it starts with salvation, and then that true born-again believer is being changed by the Spirit of God. That is sanctification. And then when we come face to face with God, that is glorification. But unbelief will keep us from health in the church. Unbelief will keep us from being saved. How might this unbelief affect us? We will not believe God's word anymore. We will not believe that God cares about our life. We will think, oh, God has left us. This COVID thing, maningkamot na lang ta sa atong kagalingan. Let's just fend for ourselves. Let's just do what we need to do and forget about God. Forget about prayer. Unbelief will cause us to not believe that God has a plan to save the world. The Bible clearly states that we are the help of the world. We are to bring Christ to the world. He commanded us. Acts chapter 1 verse number 8. The Bible tells us that we are to be His witnesses unto me, His witnesses, both in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and on to the uttermost part of the earth. Ye shall be my witnesses. We are to witness what has happened to us. We are to say what Christ did to us. He saved us. God has a plan. He implemented that plan when He sacrificed His life, His blood, His body on the cross. And then He was buried. And on the third day, He rose again. And everyone who believes in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible says, will have eternal life and will not perish. God has a plan. You are part of that plan, dear Christian. Dear member of Bible Baptist Church, you are part of that plan. And when we are in unbelief, in the state of unbelief, we are going to not believe that it matters how we worship. If we are in a state of unbelief, we are not going to believe that our commitment matters. Our commitment in service. Our commitment in giving. I hope that you will not be, as the Bible declares in the last days, those that will fall away. Don't let this world, the things that happen in this world, don't let people let you fall away. Focus on Jesus Christ. Don't be an unbeliever. Hebrews chapter 3, verse number 12, the Bible says, Take heed, brethren, lest there be any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. You can depart from the living God. You are still saved, but you can get away. God has never left us nor forsaken us. But sometimes we can forsake God. We can leave God. We can backslide. We can grow cold in our service, grow cold in our uh, attendance, grow cold in our giving, grow cold in our involvement, grow cold in our participation. We are not spectators. We are participants. The church, if you are here in the world today, we are the participants. We are not the spectators. Open your Bibles, please, to Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12, and look at verse number 1. The Bible says, Wherefore, seeing we, we that are here on earth, we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, spectators. If you want to be a spectator, if you want to be a spectator, you might as well be in heaven. But if you are here on earth, and we are here on earth, and members of the local church, Christians, born-again believers, listen, we are to be participants. Don't be an unbeliever. Don't allow unbelief to ruin the church, to ruin the plan of God for this world. Don't let unbelief ruin the forward movement of God's ministry. Ignorance will destroy the health of the church. Unbelief will destroy the health of the church. Oh, may we be like the man who cried out to Jesus in Mark chapter 9, verse number 24, and straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help thou my unbelief. Charles Hayden Spurgeon said this, Be great believers. 
Little faith will bring your souls to heaven, but great faith will bring heaven to your souls. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Live by faith. The just shall live by faith. Ignorance will destroy the health of the church. Number two, unbelief. Number three, apathy. What is apathy? A lack of passion. Lukewarm. Or sa taste pa sa kaning atong dila pa, it's just blah, bland, nothing. Nothing. Apathy is very similar to the attitude expressed by the church in Laodicea. And if we look at prophecy, we are right now in that church age, the Laodicean age, the age of lukewarmness, where apathy is creeping and sweeping in our churches today. And may Bible Baptist Church continue to be on fire for Jesus until He comes back to take us home. Notice what our Lord Jesus Christ said about the church in Revelation chapter 3 and verse number 15, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. A man once asked his wife, Do you think the world's problems are caused by ignorance or apathy? The wife replied, I don't know and I don't care. Are you apathetic to the things of God? Are you apathetic to the church of God? Are you apathetic to the work of God? Are you apathetic to the mission of God? How does apathy destroy the church? It causes us to be lukewarm about the church. It causes us to be lukewarm about reaching the lost. It causes us to be lukewarm about living right or righteously. It causes us to be lukewarm about practicing the fruit of the Spirit. In Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, the Bible says, The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, and peace. But many today are apathetic. They don't care. You know, we should care because Jesus cares. And one of the great indicators that the Spirit of God is moving in our lives is that we care. Don't be apathetic. Don't be ignorant. Don't be an unbeliever. And lastly, the number four cause why the health of the church gets affected is sin. Now, this may be the most obvious enemy, but sin happens to people who don't know. Sin happens to people who don't believe. Sin happens to people who don't care. Ignorance, unbelief, and apathy all lead to sin. If the church practices sin, ignorance, unbelief, and apathy, how can we remain the church? How can we have a healthy body of Christ? How can we be a healthy body of Christ to reach out in our community, to reach out in our country, to reach out to the world. How can the body of Christ be healthy if there is sin? Hebrews chapter 12, verse number 1, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight, and notice, and the sin which doth so easily beset us. A runner is being pictured here, and a runner does not run a race hampered by weights. The lighter the clothing, the better his run. Neither can the runner run a race weighed down by sin. There are things that hamper us in our run, but there are things that weigh us down, and sin is that. Again, in Hebrews chapter 3, verse number 12, Take heed, brethren, lest there be any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. 13, But exhort one another daily, while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Sin is deceitful, the Bible says. You do not know it, but it's there. You are experiencing it already and you think it's okay. One of the reasons we need each other as a church and as a body is so that we can help each other avoid having our hearts hardened by sin. 
when we come together, let's talk about how that we can help one another be better Christians. How that we can be able to help one another be growing in our relationship with God. That's why fellowship among believers uplifts our faith in Jesus and revives us in our mandate to go to the world. Because if sin hardens our hearts, sin can cause us to leave God and backslide. James chapter 5, verse number 19, Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth and one convert him or help him come back, let him know that he which converted the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death. You know, if we continue in sin, there is a possibility that death may come to you early. The Bible says, and shall hide a multitude of sins. Remember that the error of sin can kill the soul and it can kill the body. So again, we need each other to help us stay on the right track. For us in Bible Baptist Church to keep moving forward, we must recognize and defeat the enemy of ignorance. Defeat the enemy of unbelief, defeat the enemy of apathy, and defeat the enemy of sin through surrender of the Holy Spirit on a daily basis. We must be healthy every day. The reason why we are here today is because our bodies are healthy to ward off this, uh, this virus. and We need healthy bodies to sleep right, eat right, drink vitamins, exercise right, and you know, think right. And the only way to do that is to be guided by His Word and the Spirit of God. Let us defeat these enemies that are making or will make our church unhealthy. All of these enemies, we can do something about it. Because greater is He that is in us and than he that is in the world. Let us surrender to the Holy Spirit's control daily and enlist the help of other members of our church, other believers through prayer and fellowship and serve faithfully in a ministry where God has gifted us in. Nindut ang Christian life. Number one, enemy, the enemy of ignorance. Let us be filled with knowledge in the Word of God. Let us be filled with wisdom from God. Number two, unbelief. Let us live by faith. Number three, apathy. Let us be on fire and serve the Lord. And number four, sin. Let us confess our faults one to another. And the Bible says, if we confess our sins to God, to the Lord Jesus Christ, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let's be praying for our World Missions Conference. Let's be praying for our speakers. Let's be involved, register now, and be a part of the worldwide movement of letting people know about the glorious gospel and the saving gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you and have a pleasant morning.
now is the time we dare not hesitate the people of god must lift their voice we must be strong in the power of his might we must be strong this darkness needs our light we need revival all across the land we need revival it's time to take a stand we better fall on our knees and pray turn from our wicked ways we need revival all across the land hallelujah thine the glory hallelujah amen hallelujah thine the glory revive us again we need revival